awake, alert, enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, awake alert, 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 and enthusiastic. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know too? Oh, come on, come on, come on. It's a group event. Yeah. Okay, I don't even know the motion, so I'll be the loud voice and you'll be the motion person. All right, ready? One, two, three. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, alert. I'm alert, awake, alive. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. Oh, Yay! Okay, one more time. Yes. All right, ready? Get it, Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, alert. I'm alert, awake, alert. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. Yay! <laughs> but I could not get both. It is November and we are alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. That's right, you're gonna be singing that song all day long. All right, I love it. Well, to start today, <laughs> that was a good comeback, sorry. Um, to start today, I just want to highlight a couple announcements, some things that um, have come from precept leaders or a few of you have asked, so I just want to do some clarification. <laughs> this is now November. We are like rounding the corner and November goes by even faster than we think because we've got this week off called Thanksgiving and that's awesome, but then we come back and it's like fly to the end. Okay, so let me just highlight a couple things. The 20th to zero of November, you have a precept paper due to us. Okay, up until now, where have you been giving your precept papers? To your precept leader. Awesome. <laughs> They've been giving you Holy that. Shit. You've been talking about it with other people in your class, in your precept um, small group. But on the 20th, you can take one that you've done and revise it if you want based on feedback and turn it into us, okay? For, and then we'll give you feedback and that's what will go into your grade for this course, okay? If you haven't already figured out, there's a rubric at the end of your syllabus and that's how Tim and I will be giving you feedback on the one to five scale with regard to that, okay? So if you have questions about that, you can email us or stop by, but basically the precept time is a way to learn it and to get feedback in a safe environment that you're learning, right? Um, this is the time that you only have to turn in that, you have to turn in one, it doesn't matter what it is, right? Uh, which of the two that uses Osmer is about, um, but that's what, what we'll give you for feedback. All right. For this month, November, um, last month in October, we just had you use Osmer. We walked you through that a little bit last time. This time, for your theoretical part, right, for the second move, we want you to use the theory of strengths. So today we're going to introduce that to you, right? You get to pick the scenario that you use. Describe that and then think, how could you, thinking about strengths, 
look at this situation in a particular way. All right. So Karen's going to help us with that. Um, um, oh, one other thing I was going to say, the precept paper that you turn into Tim and I comes on the main Moodle site. I know there's been confusion and this is the first time we're using Moodle. So we're trying to figure out the best way to do this. Your precept is just for you and your precept communication. But when you turn it in anything for grading purposes, it's got to go on the main Moodle site. Okay. And there's a link to that. So you, if you can't find it, let us know. Um, great. The last thing that I want to say is um, if you're able to join us for chapel today, and you can do that for those of you online, as well as going to the link to chapel and watch it live. We have a guest. Um, his name is Jim Henderson. And tonight we have a program called No Joke Live. It's a, um, Jim heard about the friendship that was developed of three clergy in Peoria, Illinois. It was uh, a Muslim, a Jew, and a Christian that had come to be a, a friends. And they kind of led their community in some kind of different way of being together. Um, and so he found out that story, wanted to make a documentary on that. He did that. Um, the, the, a year ago, June, so the June before our election. And um, what was interesting is he's like, I didn't really know how timely this would be, but out of that, he really learned, he developed three practices around how to talk across difference, not just religious difference, but any kind of difference. And really felt that was something that's kind of a calling that he felt as a Christian leader. He's a evangelical pastor that he's pastored the church. He's not currently doing that. But he thought that's something that I think we could do better at in our society. And so he really felt the calling to follow this, um, this group, um, partnered with a person that helped do the production and that kind of stuff. And so he, they produced a book that talks about these three practices, did this documentary on them, and now they're going on the road. And the, um, tonight, the three leaders will be here, but today Jim, the producer, will be here in chapel kind of talking about why is this part of his calling as a Christian public leader and kind of tell us a little bit about a backstory. So um, I'm going to help assist, so I'm going to head out a little bit early and get over and get that set up, but we would invite you to join us for that. So with that, I'm turning it over to Dave. Hello, party people. How, are, how is everyone? Good. We're going good. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I, I only need one. Um, we're going to talk about our tov today. Get a little Hebrew lesson. I have some Hebrew. Um, so we need somebody who is comfortable reading in front of a live studio audience that can read this for us. We pass the mic to somebody who is willing to read. Miss Deborah, jumping up with her coffee, ready to go. The whole thing, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with every seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was every evening and there was morning the sixth day. Awesome, thank you. So God, says, yo, I'm going to make some stuff. And when God speaks things into life and God creates these things, God looks at it and sees that it is good. 
But the word in Hebrew is tov, T-O-V. It's like mazel tov, if you know, that comes from that same root. It's like God looked at it and said, yes, that's what I'm talking about. You want to know, you want to know my essence? Look at these mountains that I create. There is an indexical relationship between what's been created and the creator. You want to know my majesty? Look at these beautiful human beings I created. And I gave them my spirit. And so when, and if you truly want to understand me, you look at what, what I've created. And then I believe that God invites us to do the same thing. Amen. So God, well, God wants us to bring all of who we are to everything that we do. You want to know who I am? Listen to this CD I created. I put all of who I was and all of my gifts into the CD. You want to you know who I am? Let, watch, watch me do this ballet recital. And, and just watch how I pour everything that I have into it. And watch how I come alive when I use the gifts that God has given me. So all of us are wired for different things. We're not wired for the same thing. You want to know who I am? Watch how I sit in, the, in this meeting with a friend. And she talks about herself too much. And nobody else is willing to listen to her. And watch how I listen to her with compassion. Mm -hmm. You watch me do this. You understand a little bit of the essence. You understand the gifts that God has given you. So Tov is about bringing all of who we are to what we do. So instead of our, our, our modus operandi of uh, normally we have do, have, be, right? You do what you can. You get the stuff that you can get so you can have, right? Do, have, be. But God invites us into a new way. In this Tov, what happens is we get to be, do, have. So if I'm actually a forgiven, beloved, redeemed child of God, then everything that I do just comes, comes from a place of gratitude. And then what, what comes from it, you know, what I get from it, that's just icing on the cake. So how do we bring all of who we are uh, to everything that we do? That's what Tov looks like. So my, my brother is a, a piano player and he plays these really intricate pieces like, you know, Franz Liszt and people I can't really pronounce their names even. That's how, uh, that's how good he is, uh, Rachmaninoff. And, and so when you, when you walk into the room, you'll, you'll hear, you know, Rachmaninoff playing in the room and the room is reverberating with Rachmaninoff. But I would also say that the room is reverberating brother spirit with my brother's gifts so when you look at the piano the piano is sitting there and you look at this little sheet music and you see these little you know this white stuff and these little black dots and lines and things like that you can tell how technical I am with music um, and until he puts his hands on that piano it's just lines and dots on a page but when he puts his hands on it it comes to life amen and, and so you're going to have, you're going to get to your first call and your, your name is going to be on an org chart somewhere. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be your name there. But when you put your gifts into that position, suddenly it comes to life. And that's what God invites each of us to do is to bring who we are to those positions. So, you know, I'm the, I'm the CPL coordinator. Okay. That's my title here. Right. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But I'm, I'm figuring it out. But I'm, I'm trying to bring my gifts into that place. And that's what God has called us to do. So Colossians 3 tells us that in whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters. So Martin Luther really had a, a sense of this, right? He really meant whatever you do. He really meant that. If you're a, if you're a mother, then, then be a mother then bring all of who you are to what you do in that mother. Do it to bring glory to God. If you're a runner, run as hard as you can. If you've ever seen Chariots of Fire, when um, the, the main character is explaining to his sister why he's going to... Chariots of Fire, am I dating myself with Chariots of Fire? Okay. Okay. He's explaining to his sister. He says, um, she says, why are you going to be a runner instead, you know, instead of a missionary? And he says, because when I run, I feel God's pleasure. And when we use the gifts that God has given us, we, we feel God's pleasure. Um, mm. so that's, that's, the, that's the task, is how do we figure out what we're wired to be and do in this world. So one way to just ask this question, 
Um, and, and I think I'll, I'll just give you like a real brief minute, minute together to pick Man. one of these questions, attack one or all of these questions if you can, um, and to try to help you get at your toe. So what, what makes you come alive when you do it? What was something you did recently where you just lost track of time and space because you enjoyed it so much? What do you do well that you don't remember learning how to do? Like, I've always been a good listener. I never took a class on listening, I, but for some reason I can show up in a room and I can always listen. Um, so just find a strange person next to you for a moment and, um, and, and see if you can get at what, what you think one of your toes are in your life. Can you try that? Are you guys tracking with what tobe is? It's like that sweet spot where you bless yourself, others, and God all at the same time when you do what you're wired to do and be who you're wired to be. Ready? Go. One minute. I track your time all the time when I Okay. All right, you must have a lot of toes here. What is toe for people? So, toe, okay, one more time, just to repeat, because people online are asking. Toe is about bringing all of who you are to what you're doing, and that those things that you, you say to yourself, I think this might be part of why I'm on this planet. When, I, when I'm in this space, when I'm doing this thing, when I'm being this person, this feels right. This feels like God is pleased in this moment. Does that make sense? Sorry if I didn't define it well enough. So, um, so what, what, what's told for people? Let's get one or two here. Our group here said um, that teaching was our toe. Awesome. <laughs> so for our group, it was definitely the idea of being able to listen and speaking on behalf of those who don't have a voice and entering into situations where there's a lot of pain and trying to help put things back together. Beautiful. From those online, uh, we have some folks that um, find that, I mean, even researching, getting facts, it's something that, that they've always loved to do. Um, others preaching, showing up, uh, kind of your example of listening, being non judgmental in pastoral care is somebody's, t uh, Susan's Tove. That's awesome. Well, so as you'll notice, there's, there's a huge variety, and that's the beauty of God's kingdom in this body of Christ is that God uses all these different toes um, to, bring, to bring God's goodness into the world. And so, um, so Howard Thurman says this. Um, if you haven't read Howard Thurman, I recommend it. He's a great theologian. Um, he brings this contemplative spirit, which I really appreciate. He says, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is more people who are alive, right? And I just think that God is pleased when we, when we are alive and we're in our sweet spot. Um, and the way that I like to talk about this is our job versus our work. 
So if you look at the word, the word job, the etymology means, uh, uh, the, it originally comes from an old English word, gob, G-O-B-B-E. Back in the day, you used to get paid for, your wage came from the amount of stuff that you were able to move. So it's like, okay, you move this many lumps of coal, and here's your wage. It was based on that, and that's where that word comes from. So, um, so if you have a job, you have, <laughs> you have a lump of something, right? Um, we've all had jobs, right? I, I worked at Sprint for, uh, you know, uh, evil multinational corporation. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, but I, I had to try to find, you know, it was, it was a job, right? So I had to figure out how could I find uh, meaning beyond just the stuff that I was moving around every day. Well, the word, the word work, the etymology comes from the word erg. So do we have any like physics nerds in the house? Uh, something is ergonomic, right? Um, it's, about, it's about movement of energy. And, and we would say as people of, of faith, we would say it's about movement of the spirit, right? And so, we, we, you know, you have, your, you have your stuff, right? That's your job. But then you have this movement of the spirit that's happening. That's your work. And that goes much deeper. So in, your job will change uh, on average, they say like now 17 times, some people would say even more. Um, your job will change a lot throughout your life. Um, but your work, it won't really, it probably won't change a whole lot. Th that deep core of who you are is gonna be, is, is probably not gonna change a lot. The gifts that you bring right now to being a student are probably a lot of the same gifts you're gonna bring as you go and you know, whether you do a first call as a minister, whether you go to a nonprofit. Um, for me, I've had, um, I've had many different jobs. I've been a teacher, camp counselor, coach, rapper, workshop facilitator, seminary person. I, my, my work has never really changed a whole lot. My work has been about connecting people to each other and to God. That's, that's been my work. And so, and, and it's funny how we always, Get, try to get everybody to focus on their job. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And we don't focus on their work. Who are you going to be? Like, who are you? And how are you going to bring that into wherever you end up? Um, it relieves the pressure in a way to know that you can do this work from a lot of different places. Like I said, in the sprint job where, you know, I was, I was uh, answering phones and people were angry and they're swearing at me. You guys are horrible. And, and my job was like, you know what? I'm going to connect this person to, to, to God, I'm not gonna to God's name, but I'm going to be compassionate towards them. I'm gonna to listen to them. Hopefully by the end of this conversation, they're gonna know that, that they're cared for. So I was able to do my work even in this job that was kind of crummy. Um, so, so that's the key is what do, who do we wanna be when we grow up, right? Who do we, how do we wanna um, bring all of our gifts to this work so that we can discover our toe? Now, the magic intersection for us hopefully will come when, we, when our toe intersects with, I call it like our orge uh, in Greek or sa'ak in Hebrew, which is this, this cry of, this righteous cry of anger. Like, God, how long, O oh Lord? And each one of us has a different sa'ak. Each one of us has something that we cry out and we say, God, somebody do something about this. And, and each one of us, that's wired differently too. So not only are our, are our gifts different, but our passions are different as well. So the question is, how are we going to aim those gifts so that we can um, bring more flourishing to God's cosmos? That's the question. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to do whatever you do, to put your whole self into it, not for others, but to serve the living God. Um, and I leave you with this Dr. King quote, which I really appreciate. And I know it's, it's it, Martin Luther had similar sensibilities um, when he talked about vocation. He said that if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as a Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all of the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. And I would say who did his work well. Amen. Amen. So to talk more about this, we have my amazing colleague, the ever so positive, alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic <laughs> herself, Miss Karen Kingsky, ladies and gentlemen.
thank you for um, engaging in that camp song. I know my children's ears were ringing and they weren't sure why, but that's because we would do that all the time at home and they thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us. So, um, you know, Dave just did a really awesome job of setting up this conversation that we want to have. Uh, I love the creation story because over and over we see how God took chaos and made beauty and says it is good. And to think about the uniqueness of every one of you showing up as God, whatever you're doing. You know, this great quote up here about the street sweeper, that movie that um, Dave was referencing, Chariots of Fire. There's a quote in there too where um, one of the characters says, if you peel potatoes, peel them to perfection. It's the daily stuff. And I know I get caught up in it. There's days where I'm like, how come like, I'm not out, you know, bigger, better, but what does bigger, better mean, right? Because I get to hang out with all of you guys. And when we talk about that work, like this is so not work for me, because as a developer, as someone who has this just calling, nurturing feeling of wanting to help each of you develop, to unpack this with you, this is like my best morning ever, you guys. So thanks for being here. So we're gonna talk about you. You get to, I give you permission for the next hour to just be totally selfish. And think about you. Because eventually we're gonna talk about how this translates to all that other work you're gonna do with and alongside your colleagues and your parishioners and your community. But right now we're just gonna think about you. So go ahead and just take a deep breath and just be present knowing you're a beloved child of God, created in God's image. So we have this conversation about talent. You know, we had a couple of examples of Michelangelo and, and you know, Dave was talking about um, uh, different musical talents. Um, I don't know about you, but I was not someone who ever thought of myself going on one of the reality TV shows, Greg Talent. Um, I love music, I sing in the car, right? <laughs> um, I love listening to my kids play their instruments. I was really good at writing the checks for their lessons. <laughs> not, so, not so skilled in the actual presentation of it, right? Does that mean I'm not talented? Not at all. And so one of the things that for me is important for all of us to understand is that culture sometimes tells us what talent looks like. And these are all beautiful ways that, that people express themselves. But I know I wasn't in a talent show ever where I sang or danced or any of those kind of things. Because there wasn't a category in a talent show that asked, are you the world's best developer? Are you the world's best analyst? Are you the world's best empathetic? So we have categories that sometimes culture has told us, this is what talent looks like, and I'm gonna break that open for you guys right now. Okay? So set that idea aside that to have talent, you had to sing or dance or you know, be an artist. Um, because talent shows up as a child of God, creating God's image in so many amazing ways. And that's what we wanna talk about today, what your talent is. So this whole Gallup conversation um, has multiple resources that are really awesome. And this is one that Gallup uh, developed along with some theologians because there were faith-based communities who said, you know what, this, this is a really great conversation. And in this book, Living Your Strengths, this is one of the quotes that is used for us to unpack this. So would you in the room and online read this with me, please? From a spiritual viewpoint, when we deny our talents, and instead focus on our weaknesses, we are telling God that we know this. All right, you guys are good. Thanks for uh, hanging in there. A little technical difficulty here, but we'll fix that real fast. There we go. So what do you think when you hear that? What do you think when you hear that? That you're telling God this is good, this is not good? 
It's in here if you picked up a candle. Yeah. We're telling God that we know best and that God somehow made a mistake. Well, I don't want to be the person who does that. <laughs> right? And sometimes this is hard to do because depending again on the culture that you've grown up in, if you're like me, um, we weren't supposed to boast, right? And that's even in scripture, like don't, you know, be a humble person, humility. So is talking about what you do well boastful? Or is it this opportunity to name and claim how God created you? Name and claim how God created you. Because besides all the obvious physical characteristics that are different, your spirit is different than the person next to you by design and we can't necessarily put words we can't talk about eye color hair color when we talk about your spirit but god designed you unique because god needed you to be that image of god in the world and don't ever let anybody else tell you anything other than that okay so if you have the handout i invite you to look at the next slide and there's a couple verses in scripture in the Old Testament that I just love. And, and for me to live into these and for you to think about living into those is just a gift that I think you can give to yourself and to others around you. So this first one comes from Jeremiah. Would you read it with me, everyone, please? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. That's God talking to every one of you. Every one of you in the womb before anyone else had a clue, maybe a hope, a wonder, but God knew. And secondly, in Psalm 139, would you read this with me too, please? And if you have your hand out, you'll be able to read it. So, for it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And what I want us to zoom in on today is that last phrase, wonderful are your works, God. Remember that? Wonderful are your works, God. Your creation, your work that I know very well. And so that's why today you get to be selfish for a little while and think about yourself so that you can get to know yourself, maybe with some new lenses, some new words, some new understandings of how you live and how you lead. And maybe you haven't thought about it that way before. Maybe you see others as being the leader and you're the follower. And yes, that's theologically correct too, that we're followers. But every one of you has some kind of belief. So we want to understand what that looks like and sounds like. There's a, a Jewish uh, sort of a parable, fable kind of story out there that in a nutshell, towards the end of the story is this person is unpacking like, what is my role in this journey? Who am I? What am I supposed to be? And towards the end of this story, as this person is unpacking this, uh, the story goes, um, the gentleman who's, who's asking the question to the main character says, in the coming world, they will not ask me, why were you not Moses? They will ask me, why were you not, insert your name. And that's not the conversation I wanna have when I get to the pearly gates or whatever color they are, right? <laughs> You know, I want to be able to say I understood enough about who I was that I can with confidence say, yeah, I get it. This is how you made me, God, and this is how you need me to be. Because I'm never going to be Dave or Tim or Marsha or any of you. I'm, I'm care. Because God needs me to be spirit of parents. So again, part of how you are formed is not in a vacuum, but it's part of culture, it's part of society. And we happen to be in a place and space in our culture where oftentimes we are 
stuck on weaknesses. And I know I go, I go there sometimes in my head, you know, if I haven't had enough caffeine or I'm overtired or, you know, like I focus on all the things I didn't get done or I'm not up to for the day, right? I get stuck in that weakness thing. And, and our culture feeds that. Um, we've also had a culture that for a while has been telling us, you can be anything you want to be. Just go for it. I am all about experiential learning and trying things and learning because I do discover my basketball career peaked in fourth grade <laughs> because I was this height and all of my fellow students were like this tall, right? So I could just stand there and keep shooting because they couldn't get the ball. I couldn't get any taller. <laughs> So I really couldn't be anything I wanted to be. Now, did I have fun running around on the court and trying to figure out how to dribble? Well, I did, yeah. But I am not going to ever be a basketball player. <clears throat> and then we have these conversations, and I think about, um, so my two kids are, are launched now, but I think about when they were going through uh, junior high and high school, et cetera, and they were developing their resume for college. And you were supposed to have a bazillion things on your resume of all the stuff you did because the colleges wanted to see that you had tried 24 different activities. <clears throat> You're supposed to be this really well-rounded person, right? Again, totally about experiential learning because I grow and learn every time I try something new and different, right? But is it really about being this well-rounded person or employee or student? And sometimes our culture has told us that's what you want to be. You want to be able to do a little bit of everything. And I'm going to push back and say, again, experiences are good. But as Dave was talking about job and work and, and where your essence is, I don't think we can be the, any one of us can be the fullness of who God is. Right? We've got those, those threads of God woven through us that are beautiful. So let's live into those in a way that honors God's work in the world. So one of the ways we're going to do that, that we want to give you language and, and tools and resources, is this tool called uh, the Strength Finder. Um, what I love about Strength Finder is, is they want to talk about what's right with people. That's what their conversation has been. And they've been doing it around the world. This is a global conversation that Gallup helps facilitate. There have been over 10 million people who have participated in assessments after this uh, course. Now you guys were up to like 10 million and 50 or something, right? Because <laughs> you've been part of the assessment. Um, what I love is that it's not just like take the assessment and we're done. They've been working on this since 2001. They continue to expand and create resources, but they've incorporated all of this cool understanding about brain physiology and how different parts of the brain light up when different things happen. And so they've been talking to um, people like you and me, but they've been talking to, to researchers and asking them, how do, let's watch people's brain when they get to be in their toes and see what happens that's different. And so I'm, I'm grateful to be able to say with confidence that this is a, I think, a reliable conversation for us to have. And what I mentioned before is that Gallup has been doing this for so long, that not only do they have your basic strengths finder, um, but they have this strengths-based leadership, which we had we, you use. They have the living your strengths, which, which is the faith-based tool. They continue to unpack in schools, in universities, and now seminaries and churches. Uh, what does this look like and sound like so that your people can be doing their best work? be their best essence. And I love that that's what their focus is, is, is this positive understanding of what people bring to their journey. Instead of talking about the deficits and when we need to have more training and we need to improve that person, you know, what do you do well? And let's celebrate that. But first we have to know what it is. So when you took your assessment, even though the book is called Strengths Finder, if you got your report, it talked about five talent themes, correct? Okay, 
So what I want to unpack with you for just a minute before we dive a little further into this language is what do they mean by talent? Because like I said, they're not talking necessarily about your athletic talent or your artistic talent or your musical talent. How are they unpacking talent? And this is how Gallup suggests talent looks and sounds and feels, is that talent is this naturally recurring. See that first word, natural. Without even thinking, it happens, you guys. It's this naturally recurring pattern of thought, of feeling, or of behavior. Thought, feeling, or behavior. So those things that people say to you, oh, you do that so well, and you're like, I don't know, it just happened. And they're like, no, you're so good at that. And you say, I, really, it's not a big deal. Well, it is, because the person next to you doesn't have that natural talent, but you do. <coughs> and so, again, a little different take on talent. And they want you to first understand that this is Again, your talent. We're not quite there to talk about it being a strength yet. That takes a little extra intention out. So what are your talents? Okay. We're going to zip through real quickly the 34 possible talent themes. And if you don't have your five already in front of you in some way, shape, or form, now would be a really good time to remind yourself what your five are. And as we get to the one, I'm going to just, uh, again, zip through the slides. Um, name that it's your talent by going woohoo or raising your hand or something, okay? We want to hear who's, who's got what talent in the room. So, here we go, guys. Achiever. Achiever. Great stamina. Activator. Adaptability. Analytical. Arranger. Belief. Command. Communication. Woo! Competition, <laughs> connectedness, <laughs> consistency, con context, deliberative, <laughs> developer, <laughs> discipline, <laughs> empathy, <laughs> focus, <Yeah>. futuristic, <laughs> harmony, <laughs> ideation, <laughs> includer, <Yeah>. individualization, <laughs> input, <Yeah>. intellection, <laughs> learner. Maximizer, positivity, relator, responsibility, restorative, self-assurance, significance, strategic, and woo. Okay. Good job. All right, that was a fast pace, but that's all right. Here's our next step, you guys. We all got a, a strip of stickers, right? There's five stars, because you guys are all rock stars, right? We're about to blink. Here's what I need you to do. And those of you who are online, I need you to shoot them to our online facilitators. Those of you who are here, grab your sticker strip. See how there's 34 themes up on the wall? Go put a sticker on each one of your five. So you should have five different sheets of paper where you're putting your stickers. Again, online people, shoot yours in here and we will put them up on the wall for you. Oh, good idea. You can write it. Yeah. All right. And then, Erica, you'll have a closer picture. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Make sure you all are coordinated. Because she's, she's just checking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do a bunch. <laughs> 